Greetings, welcome back to the shop. I'm Tim, I'm here at my repair shop, Donor Automotive in Anchorage, Alaska. And uh, got a quick tip on this Chevy here. Uh, this is an O2 Silverado. Customer came in with a complaint of the engine stalled and then it cranked but wouldn't start. And this was an intermittent thing. It's happened twice in the last couple weeks. Um, it's, a, it's an O2, like I said, half ton Silverado with the 5.3. And really this tip's gonna apply to uh, basically 2000 through probably at least 2010, having a similar issue where the engine cranks but won't start, uh, then it suddenly starts uh, and runs fine for even days. This one's been, uh, I think over a two, three week period. Uh, so it's not, of course, doing it right now, but I think we've gained enough information to determine what's going on. Uh, so now it starts and I've checked the codes and it has no codes in the computer control system. Of course, everything's functioning normally. So uh, it's pretty hard to figure anything out except for uh, the, the telltale sign, which was a strange noise from the fuel pump area. I'm gonna energize the pump and see if you can hear it. I think you probably heard that. Uh, it, it's definitely a louder, uh, low-pitched uh, type of fuel pump noise um, that is common with a failing fuel pump. Um, so when you talk about an intermittent cranks but won't start, go to turn it over and it's nothing, no fire. Uh, as far as this vehicle platform goes, your number one uh, issue, uh, especially if it's getting spark, um, but even if it's not getting spark, a condition of cranking but not starting on this year model platform uh, is gonna be most commonly associated with the faulty fuel pump or faulty fuel pump wiring. Uh, they have updated the wiring harness that connects to this, but this doesn't have a cam or crank sensor uh, that's typically going to cause that type of an issue, at least on this year model and this engine. Um, that is not a common failure. The fuel pump is. So uh, I did install a fuel pump gauge here uh, and connected it. Right now it's, it is holding pressure. Uh, if, if your gauge holds at least 32 pounds, I think, after like a minute or two, then we know the system's not bleeding down pressure. Your injectors probably aren't leaking. Your fuel pressure regulator uh, is not leaking. Uh, but, you know, that's probably not going to be the issue causing this particular complaint. But it's definitely something worth looking at when you're doing fuel system uh, diagnosis or no start condition diagnosis. But uh, let's take a closer look here. We'll even leave the pressure gauge where it's at and i'll energize the pump if you leave the key off for 10 seconds and then turn the key on the pump should energize for at least five seconds so let's try it now okay the pump energized and it brought the pressure up to like 35. that is not uh not going to be uh, adequate pressure you should be maintaining 50 to 60 psi uh, under that test. And normal if you lose a little bit of pressure, but it should not immediately bleed off to zero, that would indicate something else. Side note, if you are losing pressure rapidly uh, and you have a condition where the vehicle kind of floods out, uh, that's a separate deal. It could be related to fuel injectors leaking or the fuel pressure regulator, which is a common leakage point, uh, then it's, it's getting too much fuel into the engine per se and could create a condition where it's flooded on restart. It runs rough after it starts up. It's blowing out black smoke. That's kind of a different deal. That was not the symptom that was described to me. But if that's the case with you, definitely worth doing this fuel pressure test again. Identify it's leaking off pressure and then try to determine if it's a fuel injector. May require pulling the fuel rail and looking check your misfire monitors might lead you in the right direction. 
fuel pressure regulator, pull the vacuum hose, check and see uh, right there at the regulator if, if, uh, if the uh, fuel is leaking into the vacuum side. But I've reached uh, the conclusion, I think, with the information we have, uh, it's, it's not going to act up on me as far as not starting, but we know it's got low pressure, um, and we could probably spend an awful lot of time doing all sorts of checks, but uh, I think we have enough conclusive information to uh, determine the pump is bad. So we're going to pry some of the original equipment pump with updated wiring harness and get this put in there. I did want to take just a minute today. Uh, of course, we're in the middle of this uh, Chinese flu outbreak, the coronavirus deal. And, uh, uh, you know, especially to any of you out there who are kind of on the front lines of this, and I'm talking healthcare workers that are that are knee deep in this deal, man, we're praying for you and uh, uh, tough stuff. So uh, you have our thoughts and prayers. Uh, even you auto workers, you know, you're kind of uh, the next tier of frontline workers. And uh, a lot of you are not, not able to sit at home. We're kind of out there trying to get a paycheck. We're, we're, we're uh, a critical infrastructure support business. So, uh, Tanya and I are here uh, with the doors open trying to assist people uh, in this time and like many of you are. And uh, we're doing everything we can to prevent the spread of illness and at the same time help and serve our clients and keep our business running. Um, so uh, for any of you, uh, for everyone, you know, we're in the middle of this deal and uh, facing uh, financial and health hardships and the potential for that. Uh, you know, our prayers are with you. We're in this together. And uh, I think there's some bright days ahead for uh, this country and, uh, and our planet. And as long as we uh, stick together and help each other out. Uh, so thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Have a good one.